Hello, my name is Dr. Hazel Grace Yates, and I am very excited today to introduce, um, this is Sean Patrick Marr, who's calling in from Austin, Texas. And we are also here with Josh Levin, calling in from Boulder, Colorado. And I'm actually in Phoenix, randomly. Um, we are excited because the, the Cock and the Pussy Project has actually never been to Denver. Um, and we've also, this is the first time that there's going to be three of us facilitating, and this is going to be Josh's first time to facilitate. Um, so I'm just thrilled and honored. Josh and I go back to the Integral Center with train, the trainer T3 um, from Circling Practice, and Sean and I, of course, travel the country doing this um, all over the, the country. So I want to start by passing it over to you, Josh, and have you just ask whatever is right on top for you about um, about the projects that Sean and I are doing. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm honored to be part of the leadership here with you guys and excited to learn from you a lot and have a lot of admiration for your commitment to this work. And I think if I were a participant coming, I would want to know why. I would want to know why you guys are doing this at all, why this matters to you, how this, how this fits with values that you're holding, like some version of that kind of boiled down to why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. So maybe each of you could take a crack at that. Sean? Maybe, yeah, start with Sean. Okay. Uh, the the mission that we seem to hold for this, for these projects is to end global sexual shame. And one of the most basic ways of doing that is just to bring what's in the shadow and bring it into the light. And by just getting the opportunity to express ourselves and to release the burden of carrying stories of carrying uh, shame of carrying anything that we've been holding on to around our sexuality and have a container that's available to us, that's compassionate, well-held, and as safe as possible uh, as we can make it, and to be able to deliver and, and let that off of our own shoulders and share it with a group is just an incredible liberating experience, and it can be very life-changing in and of itself. And um, so the opportunity there is, is my big why, just to create a container that has the opportunity for people to express their truth and what it is like to be sexual beings and, and all the beauty and all the shame that comes along with that um, in a container where others are also there to hold space for them and to be supportive and compassionate. Mm. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. And my answer is actually stemming from something that Sean said in the past, which is as humans, I believe that some of the most ecstatic, blissful experiences that we can have as a human is through sexual ecstasy and sexual bliss and connection. And in equal to that is some of the most toxic, painful wound places that we can experience is also around, around sexuality. And so when we're swimming in this toxic sexual pain, shame, confusion, embarrassment, that that, that doesn't just ex, um, show up in the bedroom. I believe it actually shows up in all in the ways that we're being in our life with our family, with our friends, with our work. And so if we're carrying around this toxicity that in our culture, even though sex is, is all around us all the time, we're carrying around this, but not in a, in a really clean, empowered way that it's, it's so negatively penetrating all aspects of society. And so when we can have the opportunity to come together as human beings and share authentically and honestly, this is what it's like to be me as a sexual creature and a human being with my genitals and my sexuality, both the beautiful and the celebratory, but also the, the horrible and the awful and the painful that we can actually come together and see one another for who we are and what we've gone through. And it's that seeing it, seeing that we are so similar, we're so much more similar than we are different. That to me is that point of love of seeing and being seen with one another. And it, and it allows us to release that toxic shit that so many of us are carrying around so that we can be more light and more free and experience the exquisite 
blissful pleasure of sexuality. That's kind of why I do that. (laughs) (laughs) Kind (laughs) of. I think one of the experiences I'm having, maybe the, the strongest experience I'm having, just as I'm listening to the two of you, I've heard you share similar things before, but I just sort of was trying to listen totally fresh mm. in this moment. And one of the things that stands out is the way that both of you seemed so in touch with what you were saying, like you were, mm. you were really sharing from inside of this these perspectives, these beliefs, these desires, these passions that you hold, I got a sense of how how deeply woven into your being is all of this work. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, and 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 that was enjoyable for me. I feel respect. I feel honor. Um, I feel I feel trust in following you guys as I'm learning more about leadership in this territory. Mm. Thank you for that reflection, Josh. And I am when I put the curiosity spotlight on you and you've not done this before. And I asked you six weeks ago and you were a clear yes. And I just want to know what had you, your body and your mind and your heart say yes, that you're in. Yeah. I think there's two parts to my answer. Um, and I'll, I'll keep them both brief for now. One has to do with my own process around secrecy and shame in another area of my life, not in the sexuality um, territory. And so this project lines up with uh, the theme as it has been showing up in my life. So it was a nice, oh, oh, there's, there's a lot of work being done with secrecy and shame um, in this territory. And I want to go check that out because I have my version of doing it in another territory in my life. So that's the first one, like, oh, a natural match of themes. And the other one was, you know, really hearing where you're at these days, Hazel Grace. Um, I talked to you a couple years ago, I think, about this. And then to hear how much momentum has been building and how, how successful you've been at, at starting to grow and manifest this vision that you've had for years. I was totally enrolled just at the personal level of being with you in this territory and celebrating your commitment to it and, and your vision around it. And I wanted to be part of it. Mm, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I said this to you earlier, and uh, it feels vulnerable to say it now in, in this interview, and, I, and it feels loud, which feels like you saying yes and joining us on this project feels like a significant milestone in my career, and I'm blown away that you're here with us, and it's such a delight and a pleasure and an honor. Thank you. I like hearing that. Mm-hmm. And Sean, for the people who've never experienced the cock or pussy project would you be willing to share what the process looks like sure so um for each of the projects um in denver we'll be doing them both in the same day and in boulder we'll be doing one uh each evening two days in a row Uh, for the first hour for the first 45 minutes to an hour we actually spend just building the container we set agreements ways of being and we're doing this to create a container that's as safe as we can possibly create it um, for us to be able to share as deeply and vulnerably um, as is available to the space. So we do a lot of work in actually creating a continuity in the room so that we all feel safe enough to bring as much as we can. Mm. Um, After that, we spend about an hour and a half. We actually switch uh, the configuration of the room and we have for the cock project, all the cock owners get into the center circle, which I'm in with. And then all the uh, everyone else that would like to just be witnesses actually Uh, forms a circle around that inner circle and for the next hour and a half questions are asked by me into that inner circle and anybody can share as much as they want nobody is uh, required to share anything at any point but anybody can share based on those questions whatever's true for their own experience and anything that they want to bring into the space um, while the witnesses are just witnessing silently and holding a compassionate heart and holding a space for them to go deep Um, At the end of that process, the witness circle actually gets an opportunity to share the impact 
that they received through the process of hearing um, others who are not like them um, sharing their truths about their experience. And then we kind of come back to the, the one big circle and close out with another uh, process or two. So that's the cock project and the pussy project is actually the mirror uh, image of that. And as I said, for the Denver project, we'll be doing both in the same day. Thank you, Sean. And the thing that I want to piggyback with what you just shared, which is the way in which we invite the witness circle to share their, their impact is, is very particular and it allows for with poignancy and efficiency, really deep emotional, oftentimes there's tears that are happening um, during the witness share. And what the inner circle gets is the gift of what it was like, the gift of what it was like for them to share their stories that the outside circle usually has such a deep level of healing or seeing something they've never seen and a deep level of transformation from the, the gift of sharing their stories. And to me, this is the, the absolute most crucial part of the whole process is that share back. And I, it's my favorite, usually my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm going to invite us to come to a close and want to offer anything, any last few things that either one of you want to say in this moment. Mm. Something occurs to me, which is that, again, if I'm pretending to be a participant and I'm listening to this video, mm -hmm. I noticed, John, when you said um, anybody can answer the questions, like each, each question is optional. And you can say as much or as little as you want. I noticed uh, that I relaxed and I thought, oh, great. I can, I can just decide that I want to go to this without any pressure that I'm going to have to say something. Um, I can decide in the moment. And I really want the men to really hear that loud and clear. Um, if that is supportive in them coming to really know that for sure, that there is no pressure to answer any given question. Uh, yeah. And what we've had happen a lot, Josh, is that they'll come in and they'll say, well, they'll tell us later, but they'll, when they came in, they made a decision that they weren't going to share. And they were surprised at how easeful and how much they shared and how welcomed and safe that they felt in sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Nice. <sighs> in closing, I just want to, yeah, I just want to share that I, I, I love these containers so much. I love these circles. I love working with Hazel Grace. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been so magical. And Josh, I'm, I'm really, really glad that you're joining us. I feel really honored, um, really um, calm and like um, just available. I'm really glad that you're going to be joining us in the facilitation and leadership of these circles. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Me too. Great. We'll see you in Colorado in October. Mwah!